Hi, hello everyone, I'm your lovely host, Innocent, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club! I'm recording this right after the after one, the, the before one, the after one? Last episode, I'm recording it right after it because, oh, I'm on a roll! So, where we left off, I guess that's everyone. I glanced around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all. I sigh. I guess that's why what I ended up getting myself- what I get it- but, 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 yes. <laughs> Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch, ev I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Uh, uh, did you say something? No, oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Uh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you just completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feelings of giving up. How can that be cute? I, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Huh? You mean you have a hard time trying hard time you have you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out as nice at all. Um Well I do have a couple of suggestions. <laughs> If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it. And Innocent did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all... Excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect to change it anytime soon. Unless, of course, I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. Mm hmm? An innocent like my poem, too, you know. He even told me it was, he was impressed by it. Natsuki, Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh, I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Huh? That's not what I... Uh, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Innocent appreciates my advice more than he appreciates yours. Huh? And how do you know that he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Uh, um, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew to the sizes bigger as soon as Innocent started showing up. Natsuki! Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you! This doesn't involve you! I, I don't like fighting, guys! Suddenly, both, girl turn, both girls turned towards me as if they just noticed I was standing there. Innocent! She, she's trying to make me look bad! That's not true! She started it! If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this would never happen in the first place. What's the point of making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to our innocent. Wait, there's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most efficiently. Avoiding them is not only unnecessary in limiting yourself, but it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Innocent? Um... Well? Well? Um... Uh, how did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. But whomever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. <laughs> so... The fuck? <laughs> uh... Help me, Sayori! 
N Natsuki. Natsuki glares at me, drying up any words I had in my mouth. So instead, I turn to Yuri. Yuri. But Yuri's expression is so defenseless that I can't bring myself to say anything else to her. Sayori. Eh? Yeah. Everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this? Innocent. Well, that's her problem. This isn't about her. I, I agree. It's unfair for others to inject their own feelings onto your conflict. Yeah, unless Sayori wants to tell Yuri what a stuck-up jerk she's being. She would never. It's your immaturity that made her upset in the first place. Excuse me? Are you listening to yourself? This is exactly why. Exactly why nobody likes you. Stop! Natsuki, Yuri! You guys are my friends. I, I just want everyone to get along and be happy. My friends are wonderful people. And I love them because of their differences. Natsuki's poems. They're amazing because they give you so many feelings with just a few words. And Yuri's poems are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures in your head. Everyone's so talented. So why are we fighting? Be because... Well... Also, Natsuki's cute and there's nothing wrong with that. And Yuri's boobs are the same as they always were. Big and beautiful. Sayori. Sayori stands triumphantly. Monica stands behind her with a bewildered expression. I'll make some tea. Yuri rushes off. Natsuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. So this is why Sayori is vice president. I whispered to Monica. She nods in return. To be honest, I might come off as a good leader, but I can't organize things. But I'm and I can organize things, but I'm not very good with people. I couldn't even bring myself to interject. As president, that's kind of embarrassing of me. <laughs> nah. It's not like I can blame you. I wasn't able to say anything either. Well, I guess that just means that your hair is amazing in her own ways, isn't it? You could say that. She might be an airhead, but sometimes it's weirdly suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. I see. Take good care of her, okay? I would hate to see her get herself hurt. That makes two of us. You can count on me. Monica smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to knot. Such a genuine person really does make a good president, regardless of what she says. If only I could get the chance to talk to her a little more. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did you feel about the sh about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun! Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was alright. Well, mostly. Innocent, how about you? Uh, yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everybody. Awesome! In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learn something from your friends, too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself. I did learn a little bit more about kinds of poems that everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Innocent! Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. <laughs> Sayori beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori, about what happened earlier. Uh, oh, what do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki? Does that thing happen often? No, 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 no! Not really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't... you don't hate them, do you? No, no, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they make good friends with you. <sighs> you know, Innocent, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone else is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you, too. That's... <laughs> Every day is going to be so much fun! <sighs> Looks like Sayaria still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but... Does it really need to stop there? Oh, well, we'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the so shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay! 
Yeah. Let's do this. Alright. Writing another poem. I'm gonna try to go for Natsuki because I still have my self-doubts about Yuri being the Andre from Do the Thing. So I'm gonna to try to get these two first and save her for last because <laughs> Strawberry. Um sugar. Marshmallow. Anime. Bed. <laughs> Uh, charm, pink, giggle, fireflies, uh, lollipop, parfait, bouncy, uh, bubbles, uh, twirl, poof, uh, Feather, uh, candy, fluffy, uh, doki doki, uh, ribbon. Okay. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable over here the past couple of days. Entering the club club room is the usual. <laughs> the usual scene greets me. God, I'm having trouble with my words. I'm sorry. Hi, Anison. Yes, I are. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Oh, speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No, thanks. <gasps> oh, it's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't you take a look at your purse, Sayori? <sighs> Why... Not all of a sudden. No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Uh-uh. Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets the contents spill out into the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget you spent all of your money so that I would lend you some. Oh, but there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves one option. Ah, I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, it means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri, Yuri suddenly giggles. Oh, that was the wrong person to- eh. I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in books, as always. Uh, I wasn't listening or anything. I was just- something in my book. Yori! Tell Innocent to let me borrow some money! That's- Don't get me involved in that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Uh, did I just... I, 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 didn't, I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed in my book. <laughs> <laughs> I really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun sight of you. That's... Uh, there's no way you could think that. You're right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That! Still, coming from you, Sayori, I guess there's a little devil inside of all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but, you wouldn't have come if there weren't any, weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> Plop! Yeah! Out of nowhere, something smacks Kai Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Oh! What was... Huh? A, a cookie! Sure enough, a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. <laughs> Is this a miracle? Is it because I paid my restitution? Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you, but then I heard
heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> no, that's the key. That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori, 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 Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. Chocolate! Mm. Sayori suddenly clasps her hand over her mouth. He bit my tongue. <laughs> you're gonna go. You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. <laughs> Yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Bakers can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki and wraps her arms around her. Jeez. Uh, I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in her hand. Natsuki reaches up and nudges Sayori off her. Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. D -d -d hey! Did you seriously do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Sayori trots off to safety. Your and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Huh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Well, not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she's... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, I'm super sorry. Oh, there you are. I, I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Huh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically, quizzically glances at me. Ah, uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must have not heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. Oh, that's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. Oh, that Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, innocent. Monica smiles sweetly as she bumps her butt into everyone and makes them leave off the screen. <laughs> uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I really love the chance to share it once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I just leave out that Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her books, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Ugh. I hear Natsuki utter an ex... <laughs> what is my mouth doing today? <laughs> Exasperated sigh from within the closet. She seems to be annoyed by something. I approach her, in case she needs a hand. You looking for something in there? Freaking Monica! She never puts my stuff back in the right spot. What's the point of keeping your collection organized if someone else is gonna mess it up? Natsuki slides a bunch of stacked books and boxes across the shelf. Manga? You read manga, right? Uh, sometimes. Manga is one of those things where you can't admit you really are into until you figure out where the other person stands. 
How did you know anyway? I heard you bring it up at some point. Besides, it's kind of written on your face. What's that supposed to mean? I, I see. There's a lone volume of manga amidst a stack of various books on the side of one of the shelves. Curious, I pull it out of the sack. There it is! Natsuki snatches it out of my hand. She then turns the box of manga and slips the volume right into the middle of the rest. <sighs> Much better. Seeing a box set with one box book missing is probably the most irritating thing in the world. Oh, I know how that feels. I get a closer look at the box she's admiring. Parfait Girls? It's a series I've never heard of in my life. Probably means it's either way out of my demographic or it's simply terrible. If you're gonna judge, you can do it through the glass on that door. She points to the classroom door. Hey, I wasn't judging her or anything. I didn't even say anything. It was the tone of your voice. But I'll tell you one thing, Innocent. Consider this a lesson straight from the literature club. Don't judge a book by its cover. In fact... Natsuki pulls out the first volume of Parfait Girls from the box. I'm going to show you exactly why. She shoves the book right into my hands. Uh, I stare at the cover. It features four girls in colorful attire striking animated feminine poses. It's exceedingly moe. Don't just stand there. Uh. Natsuki grabs my arm and pulls me out of the closet. Sorry, I've been out of the closet for a while, sweetie. That's not going to work. <laughs> She then takes a seat against the wall beneath the window seal. She pats the ground next to her, signaling me to sit there. Wouldn't chairs be more comfortable? I take my seat. Chairs wouldn't work. You can't read the same time like that. Eh? Why's that? Uh, I guess it's easier to be close like this. Don't just say that! You make me feel weird about it. That's like he crosses her arms and scooches and enjoy away from me. Uh, sorry. I didn't exactly expect to be sitting this close to her, either. <laughs> uh, it's not. Not that I can say it's a particularly bad thing. <laughs> I open the book. Only a few seconds before Natsuki once again inches closer, reclaiming the additional space in which she hopes I wouldn't notice. I can feel her peering over my shoulder, much more eager to begin reading than I am. Well, how long is this I read the beginning? Huh? You don't go back and flip through the older volumes every now and then? Not really. Maybe sometimes after I've already finished the series. Hey, are you paying attention? Uh, I am, but nothing's really happened yet, so I, I can't talk at the same time. Looks like a bunch of friends in high school. Typical slice of life affair. Kind of grew out of these since it's rare for the writing to be entertaining enough to make up for the lack of plot. So, what should I expect from this? Is there going to be a plot? Well, obviously. You think I would enjoy something that didn't have a plot? I mean, well, I guess now that you're saying it, I guess I know what you're saying. One of the beginnings about the simple things, like there's a really funny chapter where they're obsessed with a guy at the ice cream shop, but it just helps you get to know the characters. And besides, it's still entertaining. But later on, there's all kinds of drama. Like, when they get into the backstories and when some of the romance starts happening, that's really what makes it good. There's so many touching parts. Oh, is that so? Sounds like you really know what you're talking about. Maybe I underestimated you. <laughs> hey, wait! What's that supposed to mean? Ugh. Natsuki gives me a little shove. I just mean that I haven't seen you yet at your full power. <laughs> Good save. Uh, this chapter seems to be about baking. This is just a guess, but there's a lot of baking in this manga. Well... Natsuki pauses for a moment, as if she doesn't want to admit something. Yeah... What does it matter? It doesn't, I was just curious. Since you enjoy baking too, right? That's... <laughs> just a coincidence! I just happened to get in baking around the same time I got this manga! Like, I would never get anything because of it's in a manga. I feel bad for anyone that's impressionable. <laughs> Definitely not a coincidence. I guess that explains Natsuki's interest in baking. Still, of all the hobbies to pick up from a manga, that's definitely one of the better ones. Not to mention she's really good at it, so who am I to judge? We read on the floor we read on for a few more minutes. I finished a couple of chapters at this point. Are you sure this isn't boring for you? Oh, it's not! Even though you're just watching me read? 
well, fine with that. If you say so. I guess it's fun sharing something you like with someone else. I always get excited when I can, bleh, when I convince any of my friends to pick up a series I enjoy. You know what I mean? Huh? Hmm? You don't? Um, that's not. Well, I wouldn't really know. What do you mean? Don't you share your manga with your friends? Would you not rub it in? Jeez. Uh, sorry. Hm. Like, I could ever get my friends to read this. I just think manga's for kids. I can't even bring it up without being all like, Eh, hey, you still haven't grown out of that yet? I just want to punch him in the face. Ugh, I know that kinds of people. Also, it takes a lot of effort to find friends who don't judge, much less friends that who are also into it. I'm already kind of a loser, so I guess I gravitated towards the other losers over time. But it's probably harder for someone like you. Hmm? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Wait, which part? I mean, I feel like I can't even be keeping in my own room. I don't even know what my dad would do if he found this. At least it's safe here in the club room. Something Monica was kind of a jerk about it. Ugh! I just can't win, can I? Well, it paid off in the end, didn't it? I mean, here I am reading it. Well, it's not like this solves any of my problems. Maybe. But at least you're enjoying yourself, right? <sighs> so? <laughs> Jesus, enough! Are you gonna keep reading or what? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm a bit gassy tonight. <laughs> I flip through the pages. Suddenly, Natsuki starts laughing. <laughs> Natsukifa puts her fingers on one of the panels. Minari is my favorite character. <laughs> you always feel a little bad for her since she's so unlucky. But it gets especially bad when... Uh, I shouldn't be talking about that yet. I'll just finish this chapter. Natsuki's voice sparkles with excitement. It's a stark contrast to her usual bossy tone. But if she's not used to sharing her favorite manga with her friends, I can understand why. It's hard to express in words the feeling you get when connecting with someone like that, and being able to provide that to Natsuki for whom it is rare whom it is a rare experience. They use whom a lot in this. I like it. The thought makes me smile a little to myself. Okay, everyone. Huh? Are you all ready with today's poems? Oh come on! Could your timing be any worse? Sorry. I just need to make sure we have enough time. No, you do look pretty cozy over there. <laughs> Natsuki suddenly notices how close she got into me. She hastily slides herself a good 12 inches away from me. Alright, guess I'll stop here for now. Yeah, I... Sorry. Snot is my worst enemy this time of year. Anyway, I close the book and hand it over to Natsuki. You're just... Giving it back? Don't you want to know what happens? Uh, yeah, but... Monica just said, Don't be dumb! Just take it home with you! Huh? Is that really alright? I said that mostly because I didn't really plan on using my spare time to read this. Well, of course! It would take forever you to finish it if you didn't take it home. Just finish that one before tomorrow so we can start the next one! And if it gets bent, I'll kill you! By tomorrow? You only got partway through the volume so far. I might fall behind on some shows if I try to get through this. And I suppose it's a necessary sacrifice to exchange for seeing Nasuki's enthusiastic face. How long does it take you to read a manga, bruh? I can read a manga in like 30 minutes. And that's like on a long day. Where I keep forgetting what I read. <laughs> and then forgetting which way Japanese read the page on text on a page. That's like on my bad days. Come on, bruh. It's a comic. <laughs> or am I more scared of what will happen if I don't finish it? Alright then. I stand up. I return to where I put my stuff and carefully slip the book into my bag. Just going down the list. Oh my goodness! This is so good in a set! Huh? I love it! Especially after yesterday's poem! Ugh... 
you're really too honest sometimes, you know that, Sayori? No, but really! I want to put this on my wall! Can I? Sayori, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. That is me, I say that all the time! Especially with art, I have no idea what I'm doing. I just kind of guess and hope it looks good. <laughs> well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. <laughs> Jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than that. Maybe even Natsuki's. Are you sure you don't just like it because I wrote it? Huh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of people, you know? So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's an innocent poem! And that makes it extra special! Like, I can feel your feelings in it! Sayori hugs the sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> well, I'm not very good at figuring out poems are good or not. But that's why I just go to my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess I can make feelings in a... That's a pretty important part of this whole thing, so... Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place, so... Yeah! Me neither. Ugh. Why don't you just at least giving me your thoughts? Ah, uh, you want me to write some... You want to write something for me? That's so sweet! Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Huh? Wow. I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Oh, well, whatever. Uh, anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Oh, wait, something else. Sometimes I like sad poems, too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet! Yeah! I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy! Oh, happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can really give the rain cloud a little hug. And make a nice happy rainbow. <laughs> Sayori, that's unexpectedly po poetic. Oh, is it? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all! Thanks, Innocent! I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Models. I pop off my... I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine and... All rubbing all together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck out one. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in the bottle and keep it safe. And I put it in the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in a bottle, all in a row. My collection makes me a lot of friends. Each bottle is a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friends after friends, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, dis discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and dinning, scraping and scraping. I blow off, I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time has elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locker front door, or my locked front door. Finally all done, I open up and come in my friends. In they come in such a hurry, do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull all of them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let go of one, shatters against the tiles between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Holy crap! Sorry, did you really write this? Of course I did! Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. Well, I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm used to being so cheerful? Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. 
And the point is, it came out really good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, uh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic! <laughs> You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing is the best! I'm gonna keep writing until I die! <laughs> uh, don't, don't get ahead of yourself. Sarah's always had a habit of obsessing with something before dropping it and dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. <sniffs> Ugh, I hate snot. I hate this time of year where it gets cold. The really cold here is very cold, so Natsuki! Natsuki reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me and then back at the poem. By now, she must have read more than once. Aren't you supposed to be bad at this? Is that a compliment? N no I mean, you know... Natsuki struggles to find the words she wants. I just expected a lot less from what you showed me yesterday. That's all. Well, I guess I got lucky with this one. Y yeah exactly. You just got lucky, you know? Don't get used to it. You won't always manage to write poems this cute- I mean- I mean, well, well written- No, no I, I mean- uh. <laughs> So uh, that's how it is. My poem is cute. No! Oh, but you're smiling! It's not like that! I like it! It's not really like cute things! Natsuki shoves my poem back towards me. Nah, reading it again, I decided that it's not so great after all. It's too cute and doki doki. It would only impress, you know, girls who like that kind of things. <laughs> For some reason, Natsuki is incredibly easy to see through. Well, anyway, you're gonna read mine now, right? Judging by your taste, you'll probably like it a lot. You'll probably learn something, too. Don't forget who the real pro is here. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's not why I'm friends. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. Pardon me. I tried to not let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Okay, Natsuki, fuck you. <laughs> I love spiders, goddammit. Spiders are great. They're the only, like, insect-type thing I will never kill. They eat the other bugs! Natsuki, do you not know anything? Not bad, right? Quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's is way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that it was the best I could do. Uh, no, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I don't have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain comic complicated situations with much simpler analogies. And it helps people to realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree with the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It could be about anything. Wrote this to be easily related to. Everyone hates... Has had some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid of and people find out about it. And they make fun of you or think less of you. Well, that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes? As long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. Okay. Not to get you're forgiven. I'm sorry. <laughs> People think people really need to, I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of people can too. It's what I do. <laughs> it's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless it's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow too, so look forward to it. Okay. Is it my turn? 
Let's see how it compares to yesterday's. I see. It's a bit different. I respect you for trying different things, Innocent. Were you inspired by Natsuki's film? Or Sayori's, perhaps? Oh, uh, well, I guess you could say that. I thought so. I'm happy for you. You don't need to find inspiration in my poems. I read them for myself. Not for anyone else. So I don't really need for people to like them or anything. Yuri! Huh? <laughs> I'm sorry for being blunt, but you're overthinking this a little. Just because our styles are different doesn't mean I dislike your poems. In fact, I tried to do something in your style, I would probably do a terrible job. I, I see. I'm sorry. My stupid mind it likes to do that sometimes. Anyway, you don't need to be afraid of being a little bit more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings. And write down the things you see in the That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. Oh, I see. That's a, certainly an interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um... Well, an example of that, if you'd like to read it. Of course! This is the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nodded and timidly handed me her poem. The Raccoon. It happened in the dead of the night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. You know what? I've actually never seen a raccoon in person. They're not... We don't get raccoons out here. Anyway. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies of wandering... Of... Strange tendencies of an ordinary human. Okay. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that the raccoon that it is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the sim symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, that raccoon, an urge. The moon... Increasements. Increase... It's phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glints in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto my newly satisfied... of the newly satisfied animal. Oh, I... It wouldn't scroll anymore. Whoopsie. Anyway. That's a good place to end it anyway. Yeah, so, uh, um... I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't bring my s begin to imagine what this poem is about. Ah, oh, that's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid and mad imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah. If I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Oh, well. I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep my keep to myself, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Ah, huh, that's funny. Huh? Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? About something- someone being ridiculed for strange interests? Huh? She- she did? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She, she's right. Uh, I mean, she does. Does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. That's. That. Well, that, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? <laughs> Please don't tell her I said that. <laughs> don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. Okay, Monica. Hi <laughs> again, Innocent. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not a as long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. That's the wrong voice I'm using for her. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. 
<laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Uh, sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Hmm. All right. I like it, Innocent. Really? It's a lot cuter than I expected. <laughs> oh, jeez. No, no. It kind of makes me think of something Natsuki would write. And she's a good writer, too. So take that as a compliment. <laughs> if you say so. Yep. By any chance, have you read anything by Shel Silverstein? Yes! Eh? Uh, maybe a long time ago. He's famous for telling all kinds of stories in just a few simple words. His poems can be funny, endearing, or even sad. And sometimes they're only a few lines long. They might even feel like you're writing for kids, but if you think about them, they can express views of the whole world that would apply to anybody. I see. So you're saying that Natsuki is kind of like that? Sort of. Maybe she's not an expert. But you probably won't find much filter in her poems. They might be easier to write, but they're super challenging to get the meaning through. So I can see what it would be your kind of poem to explore. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise won't stop. Violet, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. Oh no, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing that i never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with the space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of a poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote those lines really short makes me feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. Oh, I see. It's still hard to tell for me what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be abstract as a physical expression of feeling. Or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When it happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexplained may happen. Wait, is this even a tip about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Gonna save. I accidentally saved over my other one, so don't mind me. Alright, I'm gonna leave this here because it's been a long time again. Whew, this is getting... Interesting, I guess. I don't really know what I'm supposed to be expecting out of this. I, got, I told you guys what I know about this game so far in the previous episode, so I'm not going to repeat it again. Either way, thank you guys for watching. I hope you had a wonderful time, and I hope to see you all so very soon. Peace out. Bye-bye.